This is Apple's iPhone 15 Pro, a phone Apple says is more recycled than ever. And they're not talking about the design, but the materials inside. Although it is almost identical to last year's model, with the exception of the titanium frame. I have high hopes this year, as Apple publicly did a U-turn on lobbying against right to repair to now supporting a bill in the US state of California. Is this the repairable iPhone we've been waiting for? Or is Apple continuing its anti-third-party repair stance behind its pro-environmental marketing? This year, I have opted for silver and blue models, both of which come with similar accessories to last year. Once unpacked, it's time to get them set up. There is one major difference to this year's iPhone model. The proprietary lightning connector is no more. With EU legislation now requiring all phones to use USB-C, Apple has been forced to use a faster, universal connector in favour of gatekeeping their own. Meaning cable and accessory makers should no longer have to pay Apple a fee to officially use the connector. The first thing that came to my mind was what happens when you connect a Samsung charger to the iPhone 15. Will there be any non-genuine charger messages? Okay, so it didn't really explode. In fact, it worked fine and without any warning messages. At least for now. To open the iPhone 15, I'll be using iFixit's ProTech Toolkit. With loads of screwdriver bits and pry tools, you can fix just about anything. So why not skip the phone upgrade and fix what you already use? iFixit sponsored this video and is giving viewers 20% off all iPhone replacement parts until the 30th of September. Visit ifixit.com slash Hugh Jeffries or the link below. I'll start by removing the two pentalobe security screws from the base of the phone before moving across to the heat plate, which will be used to heat the display panel. This will soften the adhesive holding it in place. A suction cup can then be used to pull the screen from the frame, usually just enough that a plastic pick can be inserted and worked around the perimeter. This opening procedure hasn't changed in several years, but there is a startling difference to the previous iPhone Pro models, which we'll get to later. For now, it's time to repeat the same process for our other iPhone 15 Pro. The adhesive doesn't appear to be any stronger than last year's, but it still requires a lot of heat to soften. And just like that, we have our first look inside the iPhone 15 Pro. While set out similar to last year's, it's actually less embellished, with the CPU branding no longer printed on the main bracket. But we didn't open the phone just to look at it. We want to take it apart. Removing the main bracket, we can begin to see the logic board. Visible is several cables with data matrix codes etched into their connectors. From experience, these are usually the software paired parts. The battery connector has also been labelled, something new to this model that I'm happy to see. With the display removed, we can now get a closer look at the logic board and all of its flex cables. We can also see the display itself, which now has a clear plastic border opposed to a black one on previous generations. I'll proceed to remove the logic board from the phone. It's secured with more flex cables than screws, and after detaching 12 of those cables, there are three standoff screws that are holding it down. There was a fourth screw I unfastened, however, it was unrelated. Considering I'm one of the first people in the world to disassemble this phone, and to do so without any sort of manual or guide, I'd say I'm doing pretty well. I did need to remove the earpiece speaker in order to gain enough clearance to remove the board. However, there was still something attaching to it from the bottom. Sure enough, there's an extra flex cable which is housed under its own bracket. Once it's detached, the logic board is free. This one's packing Apple's A17 processor and 128 gigs of storage. But one thing's for sure, there are a lot of connectors. It doesn't prohibit repair, just adds to the complexity and time it takes to remove the board. Before proceeding any further in my teardown, I want to perform my usual logic board swap test. This simulates the replacement of every part on the phone. And while one may assume replacement parts from another brand new iPhone would work without issue, its software has been programmed to check the serial number of many components and simply remove random features 
If it doesn't work with brand new Apple parts, it's certainly not going to work with any third party ones. Having labelled each logic board, I'll swap them, meaning the only thing to change in these phones is the logic board. But the question this year is has this issue gotten better or worse? If Apple is supporting right to repair bills, I should have the right to be able to work on my iPhone 15 now, right? Apparently not. If you've seen any of my previous iPhone teardown and repair assessment videos, you'll be familiar with these messages and many of the associated issues. But there's a new one. The battery cycle count, manufacturing date, and first use metrics in the phone's about page now show as unknown. Like previous models, cameras are one of the most affected. With a replacement front camera, you can say goodbye to selfies as the camera fails to load. Of course, we also have the usual array of errors and problems, including battery health being disabled, true tone color adjustment has vanished, auto brightness ceases to function, and face ID is not available. Resetting the phone won't help you either, with the issues persisting. These exact issues have been happening for multiple iPhone generations, demonstrated by me in my previous videos. Yet, the issues still remain. The only way to avoid these issues is to pay Apple for repair, as only they have access to the software that makes iOS accept the new part. Even using Apple's own self-repair program, I encountered similar messages and errors. It wasn't until I connected with Apple that they ran the software remotely to approve the new display. Of course, they only do this if you purchase the part from them. Without access to this software, you're left with a broken phone regardless of the quality of the new part. However, there is a partial fix for the front camera. It requires updating over the air or performing an update or full restore in iTunes. The need to flash the software on something like a Face ID sensor replacement sounds like a genuine security feature. However, while the camera now gets an image, something still prevents Face ID from working or the camera from capturing the image. Trying to take a photo freezes the app and taking a video results in a blank file that when played on a computer only captured the audio. Somehow, with all this messing around, I forced it to take one image. It looks as though it's the raw output from the camera without any post-processing. Is this the real output of the iPhone 15 selfie camera before Apple's AI magic makes it look really good? Will Apple fix this? Honestly, I'd like to see them fix it. I'd love to be proven wrong, but I have low hopes given all the other issues that still remain. I suppose the good news is the rear camera functions. Of course, swapping the logic boards back to their original phones, everything suddenly starts working again, except the front cameras which, like before, require a flash to function. But it's not all bad news. There are some good things to come out of the iPhone 15 Pro in the way of physical repairability. So I'm going to continue the disassembly on one of our iPhone 15s from here on out. I'd like to get a look at that new USB-C charge port, but before I can, I need to get the battery out. I almost lost one of those release tabs, but it pulled through. There is one more at the top, however, it's quite hard to access. It's only very little, so I can just lift the battery out from the base. Here is our 12.83 watt hour battery. One small change over previous iPhones is the text printed on the front. It no longer says I need to be an authorized technician, rather a trained technician. I hate to break it to you, but I'm self-taught. Next, it's time we work on that charge port. Its cable runs underneath the logic board, so I'll need to unfasten it slightly so I can maneuver the cable free. There is then a large quantity of screws to remove that fasten the charge port in place. These consist of varying lengths, threads, and screw types, like many of the other components inside the iPhone, so it's very important to keep track of them. One thing hindering its removal is two metal tabs poking through from the back glass. I can work around the one on the left, however, you need to bend the one on the right to be able to access the screw. Now I can work the charge port free. That is, of course, if I have removed all the screws first. Nope, I still missed two. Held in with a total of 16 screws, not including those for the speaker or Taptic Engine. With it removed, we get our first look at Apple's implementation of the USB-C port on the iPhone 15. 
It took 15 years and legislation from the EU, but the iPhone no longer has a proprietary charge port. Next to come out is the rear cameras. Unlike previous models, there's no bracket on top, just screws that secure the camera directly. With the massive cameras removed, we can see that each lens has its own image stabilization. I've saved the iPhone 15's best new feature for last. It's back over to the heat plate, but this time I'll be heating up the back glass. Unlike the previous iPhone Pro models, the glass no longer requires lasers to break down the glue. Apple has instead attached it using the same adhesive and clips as the display. This was first introduced on the iPhone 14 last year, but the Pro model missed out. But not anymore. That odd cable attached under the logic board we discovered before is for the rear panel, which houses the wireless charging coil, flash and microphone. This new method of attaching the glass will greatly help out those who crack the back of their phone. And with that, we've now fully disassembled the iPhone 15 Pro. Thanks to iFixit's magnetic mats, I've been able to keep track of all the parts we removed, which will help when it comes time to reassemble. Internally, the iPhone 15 is very similar to that of the previous few models. The biggest change being the detachable back glass and the USB-C port. With the back glass attached, it is difficult to position, but I managed. All was going well until I lost a screw. Thankfully, I had a replacement that I could put in its place. Unfortunately, this wasn't the year of the repairable iPhone. Apple did say in their presentation this model was more repairable, and technically, they're not wrong. However, I don't feel it's really repairable given the parts pairing. With the charge port in place, it's time for the logic board. It's a little tricky to round all the cables in their correct places and ensure they don't get trapped under the board before it's screwed down. Proceeding, the earpiece speaker can go into place before the three rear cameras, ensuring both the cameras and housing are free of any dust before they're installed. For the battery, I'll be using adhesive that suits an iPhone 13 Pro. It fits the iPhone 15 battery just fine. Once it's in place, it's time for the front display to be reattached before any remaining brackets. Ideally, you would apply some new adhesive before sealing up the front display or rear glass. But as this phone has just come out, those are not yet available. For now, I'll just close it down as is and secure the two pentalobe screws into the bottom. And we're done. So this is it. The iPhone 15 teardown and repair assessment. The 15 shares more than just its predecessor's design, but its anti-third-party repair tactics too. On the contrary, the Pro model now features a replaceable back glass panel. What we can learn from this phone is that if legislation was the only way for the iPhone to get USB-C, it's probably the only way the iPhone will ever become repairable. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.